us uh, this afternoon um, for the, the event and we're delighted to work in collaboration with Cell to Wales and Business Wales. Um, my name is Kat Griffith Williams. I'm the Chief Executive of Constructing Excellence in Wales. Um, we would really love your interaction um, with us as well. So if you've got any emerging questions during the presentation that Tristan will be giving us, please do either raise your hand or pop it in the chat box. Um, I'll bring you in. Um, so there's no problem of just waiting to the end. Please do wait and question, uh, ask your questions at the end or do come in if there's things that are emerging as we go along. Um, if you can uh, remain on mute uh, during the presentation, that would be great just to eliminate background noise um, and the presentation is going to be recorded. We will send that out as well as the slides following the event um, and also with Tristan's details as well. Um, so you can ask any direct questions to Tristan then. But just as a bit of a background, um, Constructing Excellence Wales is the united voice of the construction sector. We were Welsh Government funded um, and that was due um, to a response to the Egan and Latham review, Rethinking Construction, and our principles and ethos is, is very much the same. Um, unfortunately, the funding was relinquished, so we're a self-funding body now, relying on membership, um, our case studies and exemplar programmes. So please do get in touch with us to engage with the movement um, and give support to the organisation. Um, we're... Our work is all about best practice, sharing best practice um, and looking at what is happening throughout the rest of the industry so we can learn from that and take that into our own work and pro projects and programmes. Um, and we use our influence to help shift the focus away from short term costs towards long term value, which is probably the biggest ethos um, that we work towards. Um, we also align our work to the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. So that's us in a nutshell. And we really do rely on your engagement with us. Um, so please do get in contact. If you if you haven't made contact with us before, please uh, use this as an opportunity to. Um, we would welcome your information, your intelligence, etc. So uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, and without further ado, uh, we're going to hear from Tristan Jones, who's going to from Sell to Wales and Business Wales and talk us through how he can help your business succeed. So over to you, Tristan. Thanks, Kat. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, as mentioned, it's probably one of the hottest days of the year so far. So I'm hoping that um, I can keep everybody awake by the end of my presentation. Um, obviously, if you, you know, if your camera's off and you do not off, then give us a nudge and we'll, we'll try and get you back in the room. Um, this kind of session, I, I, um, I just want to uh, apologise at, at the start that my colleague Howard from Business Wales normally presents the Business Wales support um, presentation and information. Um, he's not able to join us today, so unfortunately you're going to have to bear with me, so you'll have me on both. Um, so the initial one which we'll run through is cell two. So and I was just saying, to ch chatting earlier on before we started the meeting, Normally, when we would do this, it'd be, you know, we'd be in a room, I'd, we'd be, you know, face to face. And it's easier then for me to gauge by hand, you know, who's heard of Cell2, who um, you know, hasn't heard of it and, you know, is familiar with it. So I'm going to run this on the assumption that um, some of you may be new and some of the information that we're, you're going here, you know, will be helpful and useful. For those of you who may be familiar with it, I'm hoping that, you know, you may be able to pick some um, some golden nuggets, as we call them, out of it and, you know, make the most of it. So if we can run to the next slide then, please. So again, you know, just this, just a brief run through of what I'm going to cover, um, what it is, registering with SOC, which is our single sign-on, um, some of the different notice types. And again, I'm hoping that this might be useful um, to some of you. Searching for contracts, your alerts profile, your public profile, Quick quotes, QQs, you'll hear me talk a lot about them. Um, brief summary of what we've covered, and then my contact the slide will be at the end as well. Okay, so next. So what is Sell to Wales? So the, the long and the corporate answer is this, it's the portal where Welsh public sector organisations post their contract opportunities. So it's a vital business development tool for finding opportunities within the public sector. Um, and public notices and QQs are issued by the buyers through the website. So that's the long version. Short version, um, when we're often asked at different, you know, trade shows, uh, that kind of thing that we go to, you know, who are you? What do you do? I would say think of us as either a shop window or a yellow pages. So we're there for buyers to post and distribute their notices. And we're there for suppliers to find those notices, to have a browse and look through. And similarly, we're there for the buyers to actually 
source the suppliers that they want to invite to quote, particularly QQs, um, from that business directory. So that's that's roughly what we are. And again, because we are Welsh government, um, we're free. There's no, there's no joining cost. There's no, you know, um, we're there to to help deliver the Welsh government's um, commitments to supporting procurement and SMEs through Wales. Back into the next. So why is it important for my business and how does it work? So it's simple and easy to use. Um, the site could be used for SMEs to work successfully with the public sector. And it's your gateway to regular new alerts. Now I'll cover the alerts in a little while. And this is the key bit that I'm, I'm really, we've really been pushing, particularly since the start of the pandemic. Is that 79% roughly of those opportunities that get advertised annually are smaller opportunities. So they're, you know, they're, they're below threshold, so below 122k generally. Although in the construction industry, that's below 4 million. Um, and that is a real key figure in this. But last year, there was about £6.3 billion pounds worth of spend advertised through Sell2. So if you think about 79% of that smaller opportunities, and this is the you know the message we're trying to drive across now that, that yes, we've got some of the larger frameworks and some of the bigger contracts are on there, but there are also increasingly smaller um, and SME friendly packages of works. And that's where we've, I say we, me and Howard, um, Celtic and Business Wells have been working hard over the last two, three years is to work with the big tier one companies and break those down into smaller opportunities. Sorry, that's my phone. Let me pick up. Oh, shush. Um, sorry, right, the next. So what does Sign and Cymru mean? We bought this in recently to make the Business Wales, Sell to Wales um, experience a lot simpler and smoother. So Sell to Wales sits within the Business Wales family, if you like, from the Welsh Government. So you've got us, you've got Business Wales tendering and support, Business Wales website, um, and you also got Boss. Um, and one thing I haven't had a chance to do is put a live link to the new Boss course that um, we've just finished. So if you go on to the so Boss website, there is a Sell to Wales module in there now, um, which kind of covers what I'm covering in this presentation, but also goes into a little bit more detail about what we are. And there's also a Hello Blood service, which is a recent service that we've introduced that's there to provide free translation services for your business. I think we translate up to 500 words or pages. I'll like to check on that one. Um, but the single sign on means that you register once and you can use your email address and password across all these different platforms so once you sign into one you can jump across them on to the next so searching for contracts and sell too so the simple and easy way you can do it the the old-fashioned way if you like you, from the fr front page you've got the search for notices function so you can search by keywords by the buyer name um, by location category so you can filter down quite a bit um, and by the notice types as well. So whether they're current notices, pinned, or um, the all note uh, subcontract sub notices, sorry. Um, and also if you know the notice ID, um, you can put it in there and filter it that way as well. So that gives you a live list of all the notices um, published. And we pull down from what used to be OJU, which is the official journal of the European Union. That's now changed as of 1st January this year to FTS or find a tender service. So you hear me refer to that about quite a bit. Um, that was quite a painful transition, I have to say, because previously OGU notices weren't bilingual. Now that FTS is brought in and it's in the UK version, um, it is fully bilingual, which meant that we had to translate all the OGU notice um, templates. That was a huge chunk of work. Um, so yeah, as I said, the search function, um, you know, by buyer type as well. So if you know, for example, if it's a NHS framework, you put the NHS in there and they'll pull up all their notices. This also pulls through the site notices, but not QQs. And I'll, I'll come back to that a little bit later on as well. Okay, next. So there we go, notice type. So you've got site notices. So those are contract notices that are published and available on sell to Wales only. So they tend to be straightforward, simple, single stage notices. 
um, that are just up to threshold level, so up to 122k or up to 4.4 million in the construction sector. Um, so they're not published to FTS or TED or anywhere else. So pins or prior information notices, these are your heads up, if you like. Um, they're published ahead, usually about six months ahead of a procurement going ahead. And this is where the um, public buying organisations publish the pin to say, look, you know, in the next six months, we will be publishing this contract opportunity. They'll usually put the CPB codes in there, a bit about the um, detail of the contract and the project, etc. And also usually any um, specifications or if there need to be any accreditations so as part of that tendering process, they usually put that in there as well. And then lastly, as I said, you've got the FTS notices. So these are the above thresholds. So they're published on cell two, sent up to FTS daily, and then we pull them back down into the main feed. But we also pull down any FTS notice published by um, any of the other procurements, so eTender Wales, Bravo, Proactis, um, or FTFs themselves. Okay, next. So this is looks like a bit of a complicated slide, but bear with me. So from left to right, we're looking at these are the buying organizations. So this is how they work and how they post their notices. So the first column on the left, we've got the, the type of notices. So be the PIN, FTS or QQs. Those then are published on cell two. So in the case of the site notice and FTS, there is a public notice with a QQ the buyer does a profile search to source their suppliers. Also on the uh, second from right middle column there, you've got project pages. So for the big projects from like the Transport for Wales, for example, and then their tier one contractors, um, we will give them a dedicated project page at the start. They'll give a bit about the project and also that will pull through their notices into there. So from a QQ on the bottom column, once they source the suppliers, they'll get a direct invitation to quote. And then the last two columns on the right, this is where how it all ends up. So you'll get an alert and also you'll get an alert into your notification center. So from left to right, that's the, you know, that's the process that buy will publish. And then at the end, you as a supplier will be notified of that uh, notice. OK, next. So the benefits quickly for buyers and suppliers. Um, buyers can use it to source competitive quotes quickly for low value requirements. The post box is there as a secure um, managed function. So the post box is only open between the supplier and the buyer. They can quickly find suppliers from the finder directory. Excuse me, match suppliers to categories or commodity codes. We can upload up to 100 mega data. So if you've got plans, specifications, that kind of thing. And by using QQs, the whole process is simplified and straightforward. So the benefits for suppliers, um, you can manage everything quickly through your supplier um, control panel. And buyers can now find you. You're easily visible to them for their QQ search. And it contrib contributes towards the growth of your business. OK, the next. So what's an alerts profile? So I mentioned this briefly at the start. This essentially is where cell two does pretty much all the hard work for you. So what we'll do or what the system does every night, it runs through every published notice um, from FTS or from the site. It matches the CPV codes that are in those notices to the alert to the CPV code, sorry, that you have chosen when you set up your alerts profile. So let's say you're a um, fencing is the one I normally use. So I'm a fencing contractor, so I choose the CPB codes that are relevant to fencing, so be construction, groundworks, etc. So if a notice is published that has those CPB codes in there, I'll get an email the following day. These are the following notices have been published that match your um, alerts criteria. So again, you know this is where a lot of the work is done in the background on your behalf. So it's, it's quite a useful. Um, and free and simple tool to use. So the next. So setting up your alerts profile is quite important and CPV codes, common procurement vocabulary codes. Now these are standardized codes that have been set by the EU. There's about 10,000, if not more now, and they cover pretty much every um, element of procurement. There's very little in there. They may not be, some of them aren't 
quite specific you may have to do a little bit of digging or you may have to choose a category that's um that inc incorporates your line of work or product product that you um, produce but it may not necessarily be in that what you would consider that direct category so what we would suggest and we always say to this one um is try and match those as closely as you can or choose the main parent category that way you're going to be getting alerts that Okay, sometimes you're getting alerts that may not be that relevant, but you're certain then not to miss out on anything. So sometimes, as we say in there, choosing one category on its own might not be enough. So you may need to choose several to make the most of your relevant um, profile. Okay, the next. So within your alerts profile, when you're setting it up, as I said, you've got your categories. So you can see on the screenshot there, that's how they're set out. And you can also choose geographical location, um, which allows you to choose which region of Wales you want to be working in and get alerts about. And next. OK, and again, this is just a slideshow, uh, slide of what the when your alerts probably have been set up in your notification panel. These are a list of recent alerts that we've got, so you can set them to automatically select on clear so they don't clog up your um, inbox as well okay next so this again is just going back to making sure that you select your um, relevant codes and also when um, i mentioned earlier on you've got the project pages underneath the main cpv codes there's the celtic walls projects um, heading so you can select those individual project pages as well to make sure that you're not missing out on any of the um, notices that have been published to them recently Example I've got there is TFW. OK, the next. So what's a public profile? So this is your um, what used to be called the supplier finder profile. Or SP, um, or it's now public profile. This is your virtual business card. So it's your chance of showing those buyers who you are, what you're about, what you produce. Um, and, you know, most importantly, this is your kind of list in that entry. The, the one thing I would stress on this one as well, and we, we have come across this, particularly from the start of this um, whole pandemic, when at some suppliers, some companies, um, they diversified or flipped to um, change to their manufacturing. So for, you know, manufacture PPE equipment, for example, where you may have a supplier that originally registered and created their profile. So they would have been a manufacturing um, company, for example. When they've diversified, that some of them may not have necessarily updated their profile. So when that buyer comes along and searches for PPE equipment, for example, because that original that supplier didn't originally put PPE in their keywords or haven't updated their keywords, then they may not be visible for that QQ. So it's important we, we recommend to suppliers, you know, every couple of months or so maybe, um, or if you, you know, you diversify into a new range or is there anything about your business that's changed or that you think that might be worth adding in you know add it into your keywords add it into your description um just give yourself as much chance as possible to be noticed by that buyer okay next one so again you know going as takeaways from today and this is the kind of the key messages that we're trying to get across the importance of a good profile can be um under kind of underplayed if you like as a buyer, if you imagine the majority of the buying organizations on there, their procurement teams may not be big. They may be running, you know, a huge procurement job and it may be broken down into several lots. So like the housing associations, for example, they may be doing tens, twenties of QQs a day. And when they're searching for those suppliers, they may not necessarily have the time to take to read through and look through the description. So it's important for you as a supplier to get your profile noticed. So in this example, I've got, you know, you've got a logo, you've got your keywords, you've got your company description. There are also an SME, the regions, and your company name, the link to your website. So that for me as a buyer, it's got everything I need. If I'm scrolling down and I've got, you know, I'm looking for a fencing contractor, for example, it'll return probably two, 300 um, profiles. So I'm scrolling through them. If there's one there that may not have a logo in it or may not have, you know, 
all the keywords in there or a full description or make me take another step to find out as much as I need about that company with, without seeing it at a glance. You know, I may not be looking to, to, to that supplier. I may choose the one that's got their full profile, all the info I need that gives me at a glance. So that's kind of almost like a filter, if you like. So that's the importance of a good and accurate profile. Okay, the next. So the quick quick process. Um, I mentioned this because increasingly now where we've been um, engaging with a lot of the um, construction industry, um, a lot of the tier one buyers, NHS now as well in particular, and they're starting to see the benefits of using quick quotes for their low value spend. Now I say low value, there was a company that we've just been um, started working with and their stores alone is that, you know, the stores spend annually is about five million. And they're looking to use QQs to, to manage that process now, rather than go out and find suppliers directly. They can easily sell to Wales to source those suppliers to fulfill that. So that's five million a year. Um, and if you you know expand that out over the um, the industry, since last March we've been doing virtual meet the buyer events, um, and we've hosted about 53 or so now. 57% of those suppliers are new to the supply chain. Um, and there's been over six million pounds worth of contracts been issued. So, you know, the, the work is out there, the opportunities are out there. And that's what I'm saying. This, you know, this is important for this one. The QQs is the way that a lot of those buyers are now um, sourcing those opportunities. Oh. So, on the next. So, what is a quick quote? Um, as I said, it's a electronic version a shortened version if you like of a full contract notice so it's in a full contract notice there's about 20 or 30 questions that the buyer completes to um, complete that notice and qq is only about 10 so it's generally size scope quantity um details and then q and a's and that's generally about it okay next so they're created on cell two and they only get advertised or they only get sent to the chosen suppliers that that buyer has chosen. So they don't get advertised anywhere publicly on sell to or anywhere else. Okay, and that's quite an important point to, to remember on this one. Okay, next. Uh, so, right, this is an example. I've put this into how um, a buyer uses supplier finder to search to source suppliers. So when I'm starting my um, QQ, I'll be, in this case, we're looking for a container. Um, so the buyer, that's me, ABC Construction, I'm looking for two shipping containers. So the scope, I'm looking for two of them. Um, and the CPV codes I'm going to be using, they're the, going to be shipping containers or modified containers. OK, and the next. So I'm going to choose my commodity categories now for my search. So I can choose multiple categories or single ones or whichever one um, is most relevant. So if you think back to that earlier slide, it was shipping containers or modified containers that I'm looking for. Okay, the next. So as you can see in this, the, the CPB codes that I've chosen there now are large containers, standard freight containers and shipping container, shipping operate, operations. Sorry, I can't even get my words out this morning. Um, so those are the CPB codes that I'm going to be using. So what I'm looking for now are suppliers that have got those matching CPB codes. OK, so the next. So as you can see there, I've also gone down. Um, Cargo Worldwide is a supplier on cell two, and they provide intermodal containers that would fit the buy, my buyer requirements. But when they chose their alerts profile, they chose tanks, reservoirs, containers and pressure vessels only. So as a result, they wouldn't have been included in my search because I chose the higher um, CPB codes, if that makes sense. So again, going back to your alerts profile and your supplier finder profile, this is really important that you choose the, the right and the, the most accurate CPB codes for your particular goods services. Okay, the next. So if Cargo Worldwide, for example, had chosen the, the materials and products, the main CPV code, then they would have been notified of that um, alert. OK, next. 
I'm aware of time, so I'm just going to skip through a few of these. So there you go. This is what my supplier finder search result gave back. So it gives me a list of suppliers that I can have a look at. And again, I can look through their profile, through their website to choose if they're relevant for me to send out my QQ. OK, next. So again, just to give you an idea from a buyer side, from my side, um, I can use keywords as well or regions. So if I'm I'm based up in Carnarvon, up here in the north, um, and if I you know, want to choose suppliers that are within a geographical you know, 50, 100 mile, 200 mile radius to keep my costs down, I can filter my search results that way. Similarly, as a supplier, when you're doing your alerts profile, you can choose your relevant geographical location. Yeah. OK, next. So just, you know, I may be going back and I'm, I'm kind of drumming this in again, the importance of a prof a good profile, it's keywords, logo, content information and the description of the goods or services and your website link. So apologies for kind of droning on about this one, but it's, you know, we've, we've been finding, we've been doing a lot of work with the suppliers and the buyers. Um, and one thing we found from experience when we've attended, you know, the Wales Business Shows, for example, is that a lot of suppliers coming up to us and saying either I'm not getting any alerts or um, I'm not getting any work through Sell2. I said, right, OK, two questions. Have you got an alerts profile set up and have you got your supplier finder profile up to date? If the answer to either of those is no, then nine times out of ten, they're not going to be getting as much work as they, they possibly possibly should. If both of those are yes, then and we, we have got real examples where we had a young chap who started a landscape gardening company, came up to us in, into the one year and said, look, you know, what sell to, how can it help? So we said, right, set up your profile, set up your alerts. And within six months, he was getting regular contract opportunities from local authorities, housing associations, that kind of thing. So, it, you know, it does work. OK, next. So. In summary, and just to give you a kind of a, a quick wisdom of what we, we've run through, a um, little bit about what we do, your public profile, your project pages and your alerts profile. Those are the key things I think if you know to take away from this today um, and your CPV codes, make sure they're accurate and up to date. And do as much as you can to make yourself visible to that buyer um, to select be selected for a QQ. Because once the buyer chooses the suppliers they'll get an alert to say why your ex is has sent you this um opportunity it'll then open that post box between you the supplier and that buyer <coughs> excuse me nobody else has access to that post box except the buyer and you as the supplier and that's a key important point to, to stress in this one because we have to be complying with all procurement rules and regs therefore it, it has been set qq's originally set up um, to facilitate the low value, low risk opportunities. OK, the next. So there's some useful information in this one. There's some links in there that we've put in some hyperlinks. Um, and again, you know, after the, the presentation, after the slide pack will be available. Or please, if you, anybody got any questions, then by all means, drop me a line or get in touch. We're more than happy to help. OK, next. And there you go. You'd be glad to know that that is the end of cell two. Um, so my contact detail, the, the main details are on there. Um, we're across all the socials, LinkedIn and Facebook. And again, if, if there's anybody, you know, if you want to get a case study on with us, we can do that for free. Um, help, you know, promote your business, uh, particularly if you've used cell two. That we're always looking to hear from people that, you know, may have used as may have won contracts. Um, or, you know, if you start using it and you do start winning contracts, then again, yeah, please let us know. OK, and that's the end of cell two. So. Any questions, any burning questions, anybody, everybody, is everybody still awake? And that, that's the main thing, you know. Yeah, we've got um, a question on the side, Tristan. Thank you so much okay. for the presentation. It was hugely insightful um, tour of of how things operate. Um, so I don't know if uh, D Phelps um, is available. Really, there is a question on the side, but if you um, can put your camera on, uh, D Phelps, that would be really helpful. So yes. Hello, hi. Would you like to ask hi. a question? Hi. There. Hi. Hi, Tristan. We have spoken a few times. Hi. Are you doing? Past. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, I'm assuming that we should actually encourage, I use that politely, all our suppliers to register for sell to Wales. Absolutely. Because it makes the whole process safe on a quality and um, an audit basis. Absolutely, yeah. There yeah. is no way we can really mix and match to be a successful process. No. Again, particularly with the QQs, um, it's it's almost a bit of a chicken and an egg, isn't it? We're, in, you know, we're encouraging the buying community, the buyers, to start using QQs, but in order for them to do that, then their supply chain needs to be in place and they need to get as many suppliers signed up as possible. And you, as you quite rightly say, unless you as a supplier registered on sell two, then you know it would go against all the procurement rules and regs to to go outside of that to email them. There's nothing to stop a buyer contacting a supplier that, that they know of and, and haven't registered on sell two to say, look, get yourself registered on sell two. In fact, during the QQ process, there's a button that once you as a buyer have done your supplier search. If there's a supplier that you know is you know of that hasn't come up in that search, then you can just press the invite supplier and that'll give them an email to say, look, put their email in, and they'll get an email to say, buy your X is um has got this QQ, you know, register your interest now on Salt to Wales. So yeah, the, the process is robust enough, but again, you quite rightly say you've got to be in it to win it. And unless you register yeah. on sell to, then you know, as a buyer, yeah. I'm not gonna find you as a supplier, yeah. Because the old method is you have a select list, you yeah. go through it, you pick whoever, yeah. send everything off, That's it. and it's a cumbersome yeah. process. With well, this, th th sorry. With this, I'm assuming that basically you put one set of data together, all the information, you press the button, and then it goes to whoever you've selected. Absolutely. And if you think about the old process, the old sealed um post boxes you know the old sealed bids it's effectively the same process but you know electronically and secure so again you've got that secure post box that no it's only the buyer and whoever the buyer nominates as the post box opener that has access to that um those submissions there's a submission deadline so again you know you can set a deadline by uh, by which you, know, you you want those suppliers to submit their responses there's the Q&A function as well. Um, and the Q&A function is slightly different to the post box, whereas the Q&A, if, the, for example, on a notice, there's three suppliers that register an interest, and one supplier asks that buyer a question, when that buyer responds, then that question is visible to all the other three suppliers, yeah. so that no one is disadvantaged. So again, that you know reinforces that um, adherence to the you know the, the procurement T's and C's and rules and regs but it's Thanks. it's a really simplified and I recently as I say we've been engaging with the NHS recently and we were working with our shared services and you know I demoed QQ and they were like this is brilliant you know this is this is what we need um, so yeah the, you know we're building that interest up but we also need to get more so uh, it was an interesting stat you know there's roughly give or take about 200,000 businesses in in Wales you know of those um currently we've only got about 11,000 registered suppliers within Wales on sell to food. so again there's there's something somewhere out there that people a are not knowing about us and, and don't know enough about us and what we do and what we can offer so again this is where this is really useful for for me to be in front of you guys to you know to help spread that message if you like and obviously there's no sort of country emphasis only Wales any company can anybody yeah. because with, with some specialist services there's very few Absolutely. in South Wales so yeah. we have to go outside so yeah. I work with a few companies uh, we've all got select lists and yeah. um, we get criticized for using the same people all the time yeah from different people so at least this gives the opportunity of expanding yes um do you yeah that you know the supply chain that we're open we've got suppliers from Europe registered with us um the only do restrictions that we do is from a buyer perspective we're restricted to to Welsh public sector buying organizations yeah you know we're we're, we're different to sort of like compete for or BIP solutions for example where 
they you know they charge a, a registration fee and they're open to everybody private and public we're not you know we that's that's the key difference there um and you know I, we're there to support welsh smes i've got a meeting later on this week with um hs2 they've come to us they wanted a link with celty to add to give welsh suppliers they wanted to build their supply chain as high as possible so i'll be <coughs> even though we won't be directly linking to their procurement portal we'll be putting a link on cell to to say to, to welsh smes look there's work out there you know we want to m give welsh smes as much work as possible um so yeah we're, we're engaging as far as we can but it's still getting that getting that message out fine thanks very much no props yeah okay we haven't got any other questions coming through, but this is a good opportunity for anyone to come in and ask Tristan a question. Have we got any further questions? Either raise your hand, I'll bring you in, or uh, give, just give it a couple of minutes just to see if anyone has. Here we go. Can um. Okay, so when questions are asked during the tender period and subsequently answered by the buyer. Uh, no. Um, the the contract again sell to if you think about it because we're almost that shop window so the 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 contract itself is administered by the buying organization yeah so you can use sell to um for site notices to administer that contract afterwards or generally what they will do for this particularly for the above threshold notices they'll use probably e-tender wales to actually manage that contract um so the questions are generally there to clarify um usually any technical points around the contract i hope that answers your question okay. and again sorry Adrian, I, I would stress i i'm not procurement expert um my you know i i i'm a contract manager i'm well i'm welsh government contract manager i manage the south wales contracts to the portal and the support services so if there are any technical or you know um procurement questions that I can answer then by all means I can get the answers for you um, from our procurement team. Super. Um, we haven't got any other further questions. This again, please do ask anything in the chat or raise a hand. OK, we've got another one. Still that's awake. Excellent. Still awake. That's, a, that's a good start. <laughs> OK. Um, shall we? move on to the business wales slides then and then as kat said you know obviously you know we can pick up any questions and again i'm not howard um he's far uglier than me uh, he, he, he'll, he won't take offense to that i know um and if there's any questions on the business wales uh, support or um the services that they offer so they we then i can pick that up with howard as well on your behalf okay so what is Business Wales? So as I said at the start, if you think about Sell to Wales as part of the Business Wales family, apologies, my phone is going. I thought I'd switch that off. There we go, sorry. Um, so the, the Business Wales side of it is the tendering support, oh, excuse me, that um, we offer to all Welsh SMEs. And it's diverse in this range. So it's delivered um, partly through the website. So you've got the Business Wales website and BOSS. And you've also got the um, direct one-to-one -one support offered by the Business Wales tendering advisors. Now, I know the tendering advisors very well, having worked with them all closely for, for quite a few years now. Um, and I have to say they are absolutely worth their weight in gold. You know, I. I've not come across a service that's offered for free that offers as much support and information that they can give. Um, so what I would say is that, you know, even if you, it's not direct support that you think you might need, it might be something on like apprenticeships or expansion or anything like that, there is a part of the services that we cover. So no matter where the business is in their life, uh, life cycle from start to, to, to growth, we're there to support it all the way through. And the level of support is tailored. As I said, it's one to one. It's assessed, you know, on that individual business need. 
rather than a one size fits all. OK, next. So just to give you some sort of idea of what they cover, so you've got general business advice, so that can be absolutely anything from, you know, starting your business to um, finding a premises, all that kind of stuff. Excuse me, tendering advice. We also run, um, I also manage the uh, Business Wells event system as well, because I started off on the Business Wells web team, that's why um, I know them so well. They, the tendering support workshops are run, I think we're trying to run them once a month and they're so massively oversubscribed, you wouldn't believe, but they are really invaluable. The number of businesses that we've supported that have had support to go through a tender um, and actually go, ha go ahead and win those tenders has been phenomenal. We had, I think Estuary Oils won a um, 1.4 million pound contract, having had Elgan sit there with them and say, right, in a tender, this is what you need to be putting in there. And this is what you need to be looking out for. Um, so that they, you know, they really are, if you get a chance to book on them, um, or just get in touch with Business Wells and they'll arrange for the advisor to get back in touch with you as well. So we could um, call this diversity in HR, environmental management, sustainability, um, resource efficiency advice. Again, particularly now, in, you know, with the climate um, change and the Future Wellbeing Generations Act and the Green Pledge, you know, all these are things that um, they can offer advice on. International trade support, um, particularly following Brexit, Skills Gateway, business mentoring, um, the online support, as I said, through BOSS or through the website, and the wide range of workshops that we offer as well. And it's, you know, as I said at the start, it's either face to face virtually as we are now, or eventually, I think when we get back to some sort of normality, they can arrange for a site visit or um, come and see your business. Okay, the next. So general business planning advice. So this is about business planning, business growth, self-employment, marketing, as I said, access to finance, IT, you know, premises, private sector readiness and networking. So then the contacts that we have, again, this is where they, they come into their own, having, you know, the experience that the advisors have got. Um, and we also do all the trade shows. We do got QRX coming up. Um, we go to the world's business shows. So, you know, we've, we've got an established range of networks there. So there may be something that in your line of business that you want to help to access that network um, so they can help with that. Next. OK, human resources. So again, recruitment advice, strategies and best practice, um, developing and implementing contracts, policies and procedures. This is quite important. Um, more so now where you've got the Future Wellbeing of Generations Act, things like the Wells Toms, the social value, all these new policies and um, practices that come into place, then the advisors can be there to help you um, make sense of that all effectively, as along with your legal compliance and staff engagement. OK, next. So international trade, um, exporting. So if you're, you know, th there's quite a few businesses that I know um, they've helped recently where they're getting to the stage where they're ready to expand and start exporting. So international trade strategy where, you know, you may obviously different countries have got different trading laws, etc. So they can help you navigate through all of that. Financial considerations and advice and trading conditions and regulations, particularly now, obviously, post EU, um, the rules and regs have changed so they can help with that as well. OK, next. Excuse me. Sustainability again, you know, I mentioned the green growth pledge, um, cost savings and maximizing efficiencies, waste management, environmental management systems, you know, carbon saving. Just on a side note, I mentioned the events that we've been running. Um, we've been making a note with the carbon saving. We've saved, I think it's about 70 tonnes of carbon, something ridiculous with not travelling. So if you imagine all the suppliers that would have been travelling to all those different trade shows, or supply engagement events. Um, so yeah, there's, there's things like that to consider. Um, legal compliance and also signposting as well to um, all the different 
rules and regs and all you know the policies that are in place around sustainability. Okay, next. So the skills gateway, um, it's there to help with all your skills and training that you may need. Um, it's helped to provide development opportunities to upskill your staff and support growth. An important one as well is knowledge sharing. Um, there's different, obviously different training provisions out, different training providers, um, and we can help signpost and link to those. And also potential funding opportunities for training and skills. So for apprenticeships, for example, you know, there, there are um, different apprenticeship schemes out there, different funding sources, so we can help navigate the uh, those for you. OK, next. So mentoring and again, all the Business Wales mentors are chosen very carefully for their skills, advice and experience. So the network of independent volunteer business mentors um, and what the Business Wales advisor will be able to do is as part of your one to one assessment, they'll be able to match you with the most relevant mentor so that you can get the maximum out of their experience. Um, and the mentors also, you know, they provide an impartial sounding board. So if you've got any questions, advice, etc., that you've got, and they're there to share their experience and discuss business ideas for business growth. So again, going back to the networking side of it, um, they're really, really useful. OK, next. So the tendering, so this is where kind of Howard and I merge, if you like. Um, they provide information and guidance on how to tender for public and private sector contracts to help get your business tender ready. And again, this is really important. We've had feedback from suppliers who have not been successful and the buyer can provide a certain amount of feedback. So they may say they were unsuccessful on the scoring on either price, quality or whatever. Um, whatever that supplier was lacking or was less strong on, then we can help, you know, run through that and get your tender ready. Um, guidance and e-procurement, buyer engagement and signposting. So this is kind of a, a blend, if you like, of where sell to and Business Wales kind of merge. Um, so a lot of the work that I do and we do um, goes hand in hand with the Business Wales tendering team. OK, next. So workshops, um, keep an eye on the front page of Business Wales website and also on Cell 2. We've got a feed, a live feed in there that pulls through all the latest workshops. Um, so it gives you the workshops and also any meet the buyer events that we've got coming up in your area. Um, also some of the work, workshops that Business Wales do, you know, they're on accessing business finance, tendering, tax and bookkeeping marketing and international trade to name but a few. OK, next. And then that's not me, that's Howard's contact details. And again, those, you know, these will be made available. So if you've got any questions or would like any support for your business, mm -hmm. then I would thoroughly recommend, even if it's a case of getting in touch um, and, you know, there may, there may not be that much that you, that you actually need, but it's always best to get in search and see what they can offer. And it's free. You know, as I said at the start, there's there's no service of its like that I'm aware of that can offer as much for nothing. So there we go. That's you'll be glad to know you've got no more of me. That's me done. Um, so I'm guessing I'll open it up to, to any questions. And again, I'm hoping people are awake. OK, cool. So we've we've got no avalanche of questions, which is always a good thing. So I'm I'm hoping that means that um, some of the information I've put across makes sense. Um, there's been a, a value. Um, I just would say, you know, further to reiterate what I said earlier on, if there's anything that anybody feels you know, afterwards you go away, think, oh, you know, I should have asked him that at the time, then yeah, please do feel free to get in touch. 
Fabulous. Thanks so much, Tristan. Really appreciate you talking us through all of this today. Um, yeah, please do ask any questions. You've got all the contact details in front of you. Um, it probably just leaves me to uh, close up and thank you very much. I hope uh, people do feel at ease at asking any questions that they do have. And thank you all for joining us this afternoon. So many thanks and have a great afternoon all. Cheers, everybody. Thanks all. Thank you. Cheers.